The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantinus and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into the Ignition app is, well, someone that's worked in both the UK and Australian professional services tech space has won an Australian Digital Tech Awards. Now, to be fair, the app has, maybe not you specifically, um, and I'm guessing is something of a lead foot given his enthusiasm about all things with wheels. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Brendan Allen. Woo! Yay, thank Welcome. you. Thank you. I'd love to claim those awards for my own. I, I like to think <laughs> I played a small part in it anyway. It should be a team effort, right? We should all yes. get to put those on our LinkedIn profiles, I think. We should. We should. <laughs> More awards, the better. Yes. So I'm really keen to dive into Ignition App. The listeners will know that I often approach these very personally in nature in that I want to hear about it for my business specifically, but for the sure. listeners too. But before we dive in, let's get to know you a bit through, as you as a user of technology. Sure. What's your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I do. I probably use emojis a bit too much. Um, <laughs> I am what they call a, um, a millennial, although the official term is geriatric millennial. So I'm right on the cusp. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of that term before. It's, no. it's, it's, it's insulting, but also not because um, I am still a millennial. <laughs> That's so, so funny. Um, I'm just looking at my, my phone now. Uh, I, this has surprised me. Uh, they could just be the most frequent ones recently. You know, the little guy with the sunglasses, just like yes. the cool guy. Yes. That's my most frequent one of late. But if I had to pick a one that I know is more frequent, it's probably just the, the kissy emoji, mm -hmm. which I send my wife often, because she's wonderful. <laughs> if she's listening, shout out to my wife. <laughs> um, and probably just the, like the, it could be either be the prayer one. Yeah. Or like the, it, some people say it's a high five, but I think it's the grateful. I'm very grateful yeah. for things. So if I'm in Slack and I, someone's done something for me that I really appreciate, I'll give them a nice little, little thankful emoji. Yeah. And it's interesting. Users of Slack, I think, become a very particular about their emoji usage. Yeah. I've noticed we use it too, yeah. and I'm quite particular. Like they have specific me meanings. Whereas yeah. with mates, I can get a bit random with my emoji exactly. use, right? Yeah. Whereas in the Slack yeah. environment, I'm like, no, these have very specific messaging that but, goes on. <laughs> well, here's, here's an early an early tech tip before we even get into it. Like mm -hmm. we use emojis for actual real reasons in Slack, and you may do the same. Like you know, obviously a simple one is like the checkbox, like check, check if you've read it yeah. or check or, or give me the thumbs up if you read this yeah. um, to the point where we've even built some automation around, you know, emojis, you know. Um, so it's pretty cool. Emojis have evolved a lot in they the last have. few years. Well, and mm. they say so much with so little, you know. It's yes. so <laughs> they do. So they do. powerful. And I'm with you on Slack. We're very excited about Slack automation. We've done a whole lot of that sort of stuff. So uh -huh. it's, it's uh -huh. well worth doing. So how about oh, our smartphones? You know, they may as well be surgically attached to us. It's, um, it's in my you, hand right now. <laughs> right. If you had to rip everything off it and you could only keep three of the apps, what would you keep? The first one, and this is probably a thing of, of late, uh, Duolingo. Nice. Would stay because I, um, and I'm going to shout out my wife again, 
Um, she's going to love this. She can probably hear me in the next room. My wife is uh, Mexican born. Mm -hmm. um, she moved over to Australia when she was very young, but she and her family speaks Spanish. Yep. And I'm trying my best to learn Spanish so I can keep up with them here if they're talking about me and, you know, learn some swear words as you yeah. normally do when you're learning another language, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you do. Although I'm with you. It's actually um, at the top of my list of languages to learn Spanish. It's so broadly yeah. spoken too. Like it is one of yes. those useful ones. Yep, um, absolutely. I think you can apply lots of places. So I'm with you there. What? So we had yep. Duolingo. Duolingo. What else? Yeah. Um, I would keep my uh, Apple Music or Spotify for those of you who aren't Apple Music. I, we're an Apple family here. Yep. Um, so I love Apple music. Music is our life. That's actually one of the reasons my, me and my wife get along so well. We have a, uh, a broad appreciation of music, but we have very specific, um, tastes that match. Nice. Um, so I love Apple music and there's always, you know, whether I'm walking, jogging, mowing the lawn, there's always music on. That's <laughs> definitely the one there. And probably to a similar extent, the podcast app mm. I have here. I love podcasts and it's not just because I'm on one right now. <laughs> um, podcasts just, provide such a great opportunity to to listen and learn um and even just relax it doesn't have to be yeah. anything too heavy it can just no. be something silly Correct. um and to that point even there's even like a duolingo podcast which i listen to which helps me learn even when i'm just not really doing anything that's great i didn't know that even existed that's a fantastic yeah. I'm, I'm head down writing down no this excuses happens. now i want <laughs> exactly. you speaking fluent spanish next oh, time we no. catch up oh and it's <laughs> terrible because i've got a, like an extreme maths brain and anybody oh, okay. with an extreme mass brain out there will know that means we are horrendous at languages. Like it's just okay. one of those things. It doesn't – because there's not a logic you can apply to such things. <laughs> so, no, yeah, no, I figured rough. that up a hard way. There are things like I'll say something just, oh, it's not quite right. Like oh, I'm sure that was right. That has to be right. But no, <laughs> but when you say it like this with this word in front of it, it's different. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Nuance. Language is all about uh, nuance. It is. All righty. So let's dive into Ignition, shall we? And this is quite fresh to me too. So it's an, uh -huh. an app that I haven't come across and I think some of the listeners might be the same. So sure. let's get a sense, sort of bring us up rather than diving into the details straight away. And uh -huh. if you can give us a sense of where Ignition fits in the sort of professional services tech space, you know, what game sure. are you guys playing? Who do you normally compete against? That sort of thing. Sure. Um, so we sit in a fairly unique spot, which is great for us. Mm. Um, we have done so since day one. Now, if you want to sort of look at where we sit in terms of users, it, we are focusing heavily on accountants and bookkeepers. Yep. Okay. And that's not because it's, it is a great fit, um, which is why we decided to stay there and double down on what we know best. Mm. But at the same time, I don't classify Ignition app as a accounting software, right? right? I, I, it's actually, I like to think of it as a business software because it can be used across multiple business, multiple businesses, yep. um, especially professional services as a broad stroke. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's a great tool designed to help businesses, um, accountants and bookkeepers in particular, uh, manage their client relationships in relation to um, engagement letters, compliance, um, but most importantly, making sure they get paid and valued for the services they provide. And we'll probably expand on that a bit later. Mm -hmm. um, but that's basically the, the gist of it. So I guess our target would be uh, professional services providers, accountants and bookkeepers who um, sort of maybe fall over a little bit around that initial engagement piece. Yep. Maybe it takes too long. Maybe they're, they're not landing enough clients because that process is a bit convoluted yeah. um, or maybe there's just not an automation there or maybe they're struggling to get paid yeah um, which is our biggest um, I get our biggest draw card is that whole um, I'm sick of waiting months and if not years to get paid by some of my clients or if at all yeah um, that's where we really come into it so we can expand on that later but that's that's where we sit yeah okay and and it's it's something that um you know the financial advice world has changed a lot and lots of advisors uh, still get paid potentially via say it might be a fixed fee through a super fund or other places but yeah. more yeah. and more advisors are getting paid directly uh, and yes. that has its own blessed challenges uh, it does. <laughs> time it to does. spend yeah. and so yeah. I think anything that can both streamline that from our side, but also from the customer's side so that it's easy for them yes. too. Right? That's the thing, yes. friction on their side. Like you've got mm -hmm. no chance. If it's no. that's what no. I honestly think most people aren't paying not because they don't want to, it's because it's hard. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, yeah, we've all been in that position before across, I'm sure, all of our careers and lives where um, there's a bill come in and I just, I just haven't even looked at that email yet. I just don't yeah. have time to look at that email. Yeah. And yeah, it's a blessing in disguise. And a lot of people come to look at our software and think, oh, this is great for me. 
but don't think about the the other the flip side is your clients will actually be very happy too and that's yeah. probably the biggest um hesitation we get from people is oh, i don't yep. want to rock the boat you know i've been sending my client invoices for years now and they've just been paying them um but what about that one time they don't what about how much of it they, they probably think it's a pain as well you know so yes. yeah it's a good point you bring up is um you getting paid quicker is often a great thing for your clients as well yeah yeah and so in terms of that primary problem you guys are solving is is like was the driver to just just get paid or get paid faster what was the thing that sort of was the initial push or was it you know like turning something i mean we all think you know accounting i don't know as many bookkeepers but accounting there's a lot of paper that they're still and, using so was this and, part of let's bring everybody into the you know the current yeah. century as well yeah, well, I'm lucky enough and privileged enough to be able to pretty much know what Ignition has been like from day one. Mm-hmm. Um, I started started in 2014, which is a long time ago in startup years. Yes. Um, and we, initially when I started, it was literally a glorified um, uh, e- e-signature right. uh, piece of software, right? So, And yep. that was a great solution. People were loving it because it was tailored to the industry. Yeah. Um, and because it was uh, simple and easy to use and we were marketing it to you know this industry. Um, it was a great piece of kit back then because mm. people had understood the value of their time and understood that compliance has to happen. So why not make it again as frictionless as possible, like yeah. you say? And again, if from from the uh, from the advisor's perspective versus the client's perspective, everyone's a winner because it's it's easy to do. I like to when I you mentioned uh, before I moved to the UK for a little bit, I did three years in the UK, and their um, rental system I rented obviously over there, and when I was needed somewhere to live. Um, and I, there was the company I rented through had this very cutting edge, like onboarding system for their oh. new tenants. And it blew me away. Like I'd been, you know, going in Australia when I was renting back in the day was going through into a real estate agent and filling out paperwork after paperwork right. and, and either hand delivering it or mailing it back. And they had this system that just blew me away. Like this is, this is, wow, this is mm. very interesting mm. given what I've just started doing for work. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And it really does make things a lot easier, doesn't it? And I think and, yeah. it's something that professional services, are broadly bad at is we're so focused on the service, the the yeah. thing we're providing or the expertise. Okay. Often, payment <laughs> falls by the wayside. You know, it's it just does. it's broadly it's just across. Which everybody. is ironic, it isn't is. It? Isn't it the, like, the ultimate irony? <laughs> yeah, it really is. Like, really, you're in finance, honestly. Yeah. You have debtors, you <laughs> exactly, exactly. So then, in terms of the so maybe some basics so people can get their head around it. Sure. I can I can imagine you know an invoice so a specific lumpy amount mm-hmm. that then the client could um, pay using I'm um, betting uh, direct payment or credit card all that so talk me through yeah. how, what the experience is for the consumer. Yeah, good call. Um, let, let's pretend let's pretend I'm the professional services provider. So I'm your accountant. Yep. Um, and you're a potential client, and yep. we've we've had a chat, um, and we've decided on a you know broad set of services based on your needs. Uh, I would either on the spot open up my laptop or, or go back. Let's say I pop back to my office the next mm-hmm. day. Uh, I open up Ignition and I um, g- go to create a new proposal. Yep. Uh, we call it a, a proposal or a smart proposal. Um, I would then input the services that I we discussed. Right. Um, now the really cool thing is if I think there's some other services that you might be interested in that you may we may have discussed briefly, I can include those as optional extras in okay. this proposal. So I can have option A, option B, option C. Option A is what you discussed. Option B is you know um, compliance plus advisory, and option C is compliance plus advisory plus you know um, additional apps or yep. or support or something like that, or you know um, yep. phone support, tech support. So I can give you those three options, and then whatever one you choose, um, you would say, yeah, I want I want option B. I want the middle of the road. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, where you will then be asked to um, review that. Um, then say I'm happy with the scope of these services. Yep. I'm happy with the frequency of the billing, and that billing could be, you know, could be an upfront component because I want you to pay me straight away, so we can do some training or some setup of, a, of an app. Yep. Um, and then there's the monthly recurring component, which okay. is your, your standard ongoing costs and fees. Yep. Um, if that's the way you set it up, uh, there could be an hourly rate in there for a project. There could be a bill on completion and up for a fixed amount. So there's if you depending on where you are in your journey of moving through the different billing types. Um, we can sort of cater for that, so okay. you can have a uh, you can have like a, a mix match of yep. everything. Yep. Um, and it's really good for transitioning um, accountants and bookkeepers, especially where they can provide this clarity to their clients and say, "We're still doing things this way, but I've got a bit more control over it." Right. Um, and the icing on the cake, and as far as I'm concerned, and most of our customers are concerned, 
the final step before signing the actual document is collecting, like you said, direct debit or credit card details. Okay. So you as a, as a potential client would go, this, I'm happy with this. This looks great. We're looking forward to working with you, Brendan. Here's my credit card number. Here's my direct debit details. And then you sign and acknowledge all of the scope in that proposal, yep. including the, the, the billing schedule and including yep. the fact that you've dropped in your payment details. And then, for example, if it's an upfront amount, uh, once you sign that document, I'll take that those funds straight out from your bank account or credit yeah, okay. card to say, cool, got those funds. I can get paid. I've paid now, so we can start the work. Nice. Um, you know, the fixed fee, depending on the day you, you specify, it could be the first of the month, could be the end, could be the 15th. Ignition will debit that money from your account and then send it through to you. Um, and on top of all that, we do have integrations, which we may touch on later, um, yep. where we can incorporate the invoice, like you said. Um, <clears throat> so we will generate an invoice in your ledger, yep, which will then uh, match up to that payment. So there's also a whole bunch of back-end admin that gets done automatically for you as well. Nice. And that's where the magic happens, right? That's where yeah. everyone comes and says they love us so much because they don't have to lift a finger. But you're getting paid for literally doing just the work. Yeah. You know, <laughs> instead of doing all of your work. You're doing the work for your client. You're delivering this wonderful work. They love you to bits. Yeah. Um, and it's all just happening in the back end. Nice. Nice. And so what in terms of, and we'll talk decans because that's clearly what you primarily do as, as opposed sure. to I'm betting not that many advice practices just yet. I know there are some because I got referred <laughs> to talk yeah. to you by, by some, but, um, yes, even from the, from the accounting perspective. Is, who do you find are the primary users? Are most of the teams having, you know, support or admin being the people that interact with Ignition or is it the yeah. accounts? Like who are the ones that are generally in the system? It's an interesting question. Uh, it kind of depends on the size of the, the practice or the business. Yep. Um, you know, we've got um, sole practitioners that come in and the reason they love it is because they get to run their own business the way they want. And again, they don't have to think about all of this stuff where normally yeah. they may have to hire somebody. I know it's an old a bit of a cliche to say that when you're talking about apps, but it is like another staff member mm. um, in that in that regard. Uh, when I start working with, like I work with some of the bigger um, customers in, in Australia, in APAC, mm -hmm. um, and I'm generally talking to the practice manager or right. admin staff there. And um, then we have like siloed teams as well. Some of the bigger accounts, we have siloed teams that have their, some of them even have their own mission account so they can sort of keep track of it themselves. Yeah, we do okay. have the reporting and, and tracking opportunities up as well. So yeah, it's it's quite broad. Um yeah, okay. but generally um on the bigger firms we're working with an admin team. Yeah. Um and then we have like a they have maybe like an internal chain of command in terms of approving proposals um before they go out by partners and managers. So, right. Okay. So if it's sort of yeah. more complicated and detailed and generally yeah. I'm betting bigger dollars <laughs> then they might yes. have sort of an approval process. Yes, well, that's, that's interesting correct. too. I mean, that would be um we've got a new structure going on, you know, in the industry with professional year you know, students, but or advisors, and then you might have a junior yeah. advisor and a senior advisor. It would yeah. be interesting to have something that let maybe more junior advisors certainly price yeah. something up, but it yeah. go, has to go up the line just to be checked. Exactly. I like that sort of structure that makes that really quick and easy. Yeah, yeah, and it builds confidence in your staff as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, one thing that actually is very helpful with that, which um, we've released recently, is a templated approach where if you have built – a, a group of standardized solutions and this yep. is beyond just your standardized library of services this is actually like a full like that three option i said before yeah you can build that as a template and that is your sort of you can tell your junior staff okay these are the three templates that you use we do not really deviate from that if you need to deviate from us you talk to me yep uh, and then we can talk about you know flexing those options but these are the three main things that we use or nice we offer. nice awesome in terms of then you know with the businesses you deal with who who, you know, when they get Ignition on board, who gets it? You know, who does it work for really well and who struggles? You know, what's, is there a, either a quality or a style or a size or anything like that where it stands out, the difference? It's not so much the business sides that yep. I've discovered. Um, like I mentioned earlier, like we, anyone from a, someone who's just starting up and maybe hasn't even got any clients left, the amount of people that have come on board is, I want to get this right from day one. Mm. I want to get this. Um, compliance piece nailed. I want to get the payments piece. I don't want a debtor. I don't want to be chasing people for payment no. um, in my new business. So I'm going to get you started right now. So we have that. In terms of people who struggle to adapt, I think we we have trouble with probably some more of the old school practices. Yep. yep. Um, but again, even within those practices, there's a siloed group of people that often push it. Yeah. Um, they may be a little bit more concerned about the reaction from their clients. Right. Right. And you said it earlier, Peter, at the beginning of our um, podcast here, it's actually a positive experience, positive experience for everyone involved, 99.9% yeah. yeah. .9 of the times. And I used to, I say this all the time, and if you're a customer of Ignition and you've heard me talk, you've probably heard this before, 
um, there's red flags that you can get in any business. And a red yeah. flag, as far as I'm concerned, is somebody who has an issue with a direct debit system. Yeah. All right. And if they have an issue with that, there's a good chance they can have issues with them in the future. Yeah. We've got a whole bunch of content on, it sounds really harsh, but sacking clients mm. and oh, identifying no. these red flags. And right. we've often found that people will come onto Ignition um, and then just do a massive cull of their uh, client base. Right. Because we've, they've got pushback on, on, the new, on our new system. And because of that, they've realized that, okay, these people are pulling us down. We want to replace these people with some forward thinking clients, um, you know, and send them down the street to, you know, Legacy Accountants Incorporated, you know, and yeah. they can take care of them. Yeah. <clears throat> and certainly um, it's something I haven't thought of this for years. I um, used to work in investment banking. Um, please don't hold that against me. And one of my, <laughs> one of my clients, um, he was actually from the UK and he had this policy with the business where, he paid every invoice in the business six months late. So he just let it go on and on. Oh. It was like a cash flow management thing um, okay. on and on and on. And it really stuck with me that there are some people who are just manipulating you. They you just know, do there's it on just some yeah. clients that are just doing that and yeah. none of yeah. us need that. We just yeah. don't. You don't need that in your life, you know? Like, no. So no, you don't. If, if yeah. using a tool like this draws that out in an even yeah. more obvious way, yeah. that hold on. This has all got you know far yeah. harder than it should be. Then yeah. I agree with you. You know, like, like even if you don't sack them immediately, go grab some new clients that are equivalent value, yeah. sign yeah. them on, and then get rid of them. You know, one in, one out. Exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. And then hopefully, if you're going down the route of you know looking at apps and automation, you should have some more time to find those clients. That's the ultimate goal, isn't it? Correct. Well. So between correct. between you know your old colleague or your old boss who was deliberately paying late and those. You know, admittedly, like myself, who sometimes just doesn't even open that email because I know right. it's there. Yeah. I've got the money. I just, I just can't do that right now. I'll do it yeah. next week. I'll do it next week. I'll do it next week. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where we start to really come into our own. And in terms of, you've just reminded me actually. In terms of, then, you know, I've, I'm a client of an accountant, and and my maybe I'm paying via credit card, and my credit card's going to expire. How yeah. does that work in the system in terms of timing? Does it only come up when a payment's then due, or does it come up earlier? How's that handled? That's a really good question. If no one's actually asked me that explicitly before, um, there's two. It's a two phase. The mm -hmm. first thing is you'll get a notification as an advisor or as a right. user of ignition, uh, well ahead of time that this card is coming up to expire. Yeah. Uh, when then you could be prompted to to send a specific link through to your client to say, "Hey, Peter, your card's expiring next month. Um, here's a form to fill out when you get your new one." Nice. Um, and then the I guess the safety net from that is if the you do have an actual payment projected. Um, you yourself as the advisor and also the client will get an email to say this has been rejected and the client can then update their payment details in that step as well. So Awesome. Yeah, we've thought awesome. of that. I'm glad we have because that was a good question. I know, if you didn't have a solution, I'd be like, um, <laughs> um, yeah, um, you're kind of um, going to um. have to guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it's just something that's it is a bit new to advisors because so much of our income yeah. previously has been collected via sort of product providers, you know, your super funds and stuff. Then it is a new yeah. world to us. And I know that sounds strange, but it yeah, is. Yeah, so yeah. all of us are encountering these, oh, wait a minute, that got, you know, that bounced back now. What do we do? Sort of stuff. Yeah. So anything exactly. that makes that easier. And like you say, it. I hate it when those sort of tasks absorb the team drives me nuts like that's yeah, just not yeah. adding value you know <laughs> there's so many other things we can do it, for clients again, i think know. i think the theme of the podcast is friction it just creates yeah. friction all along the line and it's not good for anyone no no not at all so then in terms of um any other interaction or the way the client you know sorry the way the app connects the say accountant or advisor with the with the client what what yeah. else does it do what are the other things that um can sort of bring them closer together um yeah that's a good question i'm gonna talk to a thing that we probably talk about more than anything else, maybe even more than payments, is scope creep. Okay. You've probably heard this term. Yep. Um, we've done, we've just done a whole month worth of webinars on scope creep, and we will continue to do webinars and content on scope creep. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and this may not seem like an obvious one when you're talking about the way you interact with your clients, but the level of service you offer your clients is obviously defined as scope. Mm. Uh, and if you are offering sort of a fixed fix fee um, approach to yep. your pricing. Um, it's really easy to get those two things out of sync where mm. the amount of work you're doing for a client um, doesn't match up with the actual uh, fee payment. Yep. So even leaving the fee side of things, like it's an opportunity, it's a, an unfortunately an opportunity um, for you to get misaligned with your client's expectations. Yeah. Um, and 
you kind of neglect that regular discussion around that scope. Yep. Um, and that, and then to some people might think again, some people who are in the right, the wrong mindset might think, oh, I don't want to talk about that because I could rock the boat. I don't want to bring that up. But here you are doing work for free. Mm. Um, where in actual reality, it's an opportunity for you to offer even more better services to your clients which you didn't even realize they wanted or needed because you haven't had that conversation. Yeah. So I feel like um, outside of the compliance piece, outside of the cash flow piece, um, Ignition gives you the tools and the confidence um, to approach these conversations and that actually have a, at least an annual meeting with your clients to say, let's talk about your engagement Yeah. Um, and let's talk about what you need from us and let's make sure you're on the right plan. Let's make sure we're, we're still working well together. Um, what else do you need? And and do those reviews regularly. Whereas, you know, we have people come to Ignition who haven't si- had a their updated engagement letter signed for like five years plus. Right. Um, so you're missing out on that opportunity. So it brings the client advisor relationship, you know, it improves it in that regard. Um, yep. And it and it's something that's not as obvious until you really sort of take stock and look back and think, I haven't had a new engagement letter signed for five years. Right. Um, and I, if I actually, if I am tracking my time and tracking my costs and I'm coming out on, you know, not coming out on top here. It's certainly something um, advisors are really conscious of up front for the first engagement because yeah. it's fair to say our experience of sort of discovering a client is as long as a piece of string and the whole thing, you know, it'll start to unravel and you'll see it like, you go, oh, okay, great. Yeah. And there's yeah. no worse feeling as an advisor when a client engages with, you, oh yeah, I just, there's this super fun, I need some assistance. Awesome. But yeah. when you start digging, there's actually four super funds. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Yeah. okay, that's a different exercise entirely because that's a whole lot of work and follow up. And it invariably, you're right. Lots of advisors would end up taking that hit, you know, they mm, just exactly. because they've already quoted. So to have something that, that forces that consideration can exactly. even be factored in, I think is fantastic. Um, and it's, a, it's just up front. It is. It is. It, that's, that's, that's the other half of that is being up front and being mm. honest. Because mm. um, if you let this stuff go on too long and then you try to jack up your prices or have right. that conversation a couple of years in, then that's that's when they get cranky with yeah. you. And rightly yeah. so. You yeah. know, like, yeah. um, Absolutely. So we have a great feature called, I'm uh, sorry to bang on about features, but um, <laughs> it's very relevant, trust me. Um, it's unit-based pricing or unit-based billing. Yep. So if you have a new client that's coming on board and you obviously haven't had a chance to suss them out yet because you haven't worked with them yet. Yeah. Um, you can provide, if you do want to provide, like a, if you do have a package or a fixed price package mm-hmm. um, as an advisor, which I know isn't too common, but it does happen. Mm-hmm. Or if you are um, offering even just hourly based billing, um, yep. that's fine too. Chuck it into the proposal. But you can actually say, um, you know, I charge X per Y. Yep. I charge X per item. And we have this awesome. unit based approach where you can actually create your own item. So you could charge. Two hundred dollars per. I'm just looking at my, my desk here. Two hundred dollars per um uh, per glass of water. Yeah, you know, which is right next to me. You know, and yep. that, if that's the thing you charge for, you can charge for that. And yep. it doesn't need to be charged, but it's sitting there to let the client know that if this happens, that's the right. I'm going to charge you this much for it. Yeah. So you can kind of build yourself a safety net um, using a proposal engine that nice. way. Nice, nice. And I'm I'm betting that merely the process of having to think that through is powerful. For a practice, exactly. you know, really, because it's that's the other thing that you know. Some of this is new to advisors. Is is some of this is maybe done on the fly a little, you know, like yep. oh, yep. just come up with that quote, right? It's this figure instead of having something really structured. Yep. This times this many plus that yep. plus that. Yep. Here's the fee, yep. you know. <laughs> and that's, that's actually some feedback we get too. Is is they love the fact that it's prompting people to make sure we're putting crossing every T and dotting every I when it comes to the initial engagement because that's where it falls over, right? If you don't get right. it right from the beginning, that's when you start to get these little corners lifting up and then before you know it, it's too late. Right, exactly, exactly. Now, I'm a big fan of integration. Um, yep. When I saw this blessed logo, when I did some research, I saw the Zapier logo. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> In part, just from um, – it's a, it's a mindset to me. And yeah. I'm betting that it's been that way in accounting as well as in advice where the yeah. internal systems are often quite closed. And in this day and age, it just doesn't work. You know, we've got yeah. to have things that can talk to each other. We've got to get those those synergies. So talk me through what the tool can integrate with. I'm betting something like zero for a starting point, but talk it's us through bet. how that can work and what value that can add. Yeah. Well, let me start small. Um, we built a lot of automation into the app itself. Good. That don't rely on other apps. So I'll touch on those briefly. We're talking about just simple things like those 
notifications around credit card expiring, right? That's some simple stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, even just simple things like um, choosing who, who gets notified when a proposal is accepted, um, so you can do you know the next steps. Yep. So as you can imagine, um, we can build automation into our app, but the most powerful automation we can build is out of the app after the proposal has been accepted. Right. Um, so let's let's get to that shortly. But we also have, as you mentioned, Zero. Yes, that would be a very safe bet. <laughs> uh, we've integrated with Zero and Zero Practice Manager since day one. Yep. Um, and the Zero integration I kind of touched on before, where if you have a payment coming being collected by ignition, uh, we'll also raise the corresponding invoice in zero for that amount, um, whether it's a one-off invoice or a monthly recurring invoice. Yeah. Uh, and those payments will match up and they'll be reconciled. Awesome. Okay, so that's all happening in the back end. Um, so that's a ledger connection. The powerful connection we have beyond that is the Zero Practice Manager. So mm-hmm. I don't know how many of your listeners listen uh, use XPM, but um, we do have the ability to also deploy jobs. Um, so again, look, right. look at our example, right? You're a new a potential new client. Mm-hmm. I've offered you... I don't know, a proposal with four services in it that are ongoing. Yep. Um, once you accept that proposal, those four services will trigger the corresponding job template in Zero Practice Manager. Um, it will assign staff automatically. It will re- recur monthly, quarterly, weekly, whatever you need it to recur, uh, or just deploy an annual job um, okay. so your staff can get started and working on it. So a lot of the initial setup for a new job would normally be done in XPM, is done yep. in Ignition, so that a trigger point is proposals accepted, jobs are deployed, Payments are being collected. Payments are getting reconciled. Invoices are getting created. It's all happening. Awesome. So that's a zero suite. We also integrate with QuickBooks Online the same way in terms mm-hmm. of Ledger. Um, we also integrate with these are native integrations. Mm-hmm. We also um, integrate with Carbon as well yep. for another workflow tool. Yep. Uh, in a similar way, um, your services in a proposal are connected to jobs in or job templates in Carbon, yep. and we push those across. Okay. Um, those are the native ones in this region. Yeah. Um, then we talk about the magic of Zapier, which mm. you mentioned, which um, you seem a bit like me, and I could probably nerd out about Zapier all day, <laughs> and I, I have. That is where we start to get really cool stuff happening, and um, the majority of the of the Zapier, for, for those who don't know Zapier, mm. and I'm sure you've spoken about it on this podcast before, um, Zapier is, I like to call it the middleman. Yep. Uh, it connects apps like Ignition to other apps like, I don't know, um, Microsoft Suite or Microsoft Gmail or whatever. Yep. Um, and Zapier does the talking. Like it lets these apps talk to each other when normally they wouldn't. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, we integrate with Zapier, which opens up to literally thousands of other apps that we can work with. Um, I'll just rattle off some common ones. Like a really basic one is, um, your, um, your email client, yep. whether it be Gmail or Outlook. Um, if a proposal is accepted uh, or if a specific proposal is accepted, if a proposal is accepted, with a certain service in it, and that service is only managed by one of one person in your team, then you can send an email to that person only to say, hey, this proposal has been accepted and it had, I don't know, superannuation um, element to it and you're yeah. the super person, so I want them to notify. Or, or send awesome. them in Slack like we said earlier. Yeah. Um, so that's a really basic one. All the way thing, through to things like, you know, building customized workflow in other apps like Trello or Trello, yeah. HubSpot or, you know, um, marketing comms. You know, if somebody signs a proposal, again, with a specific service in it, or over a certain value, then maybe you can send them a gift basket or maybe you can put them onto a certain marketing newsletter or something. Yep. You know, they get they get this one, they get that one. So Yeah. Oh, I'm 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 my heart rate's going up just talking about it. <laughs> How geeky are uh, we? I love it. <laughs> yeah. But um we love Zapier here. We use it a lot internally. I mentioned earlier we yeah. have a lot of automation built and all of that is built on Zapier. Yeah. Um and if um if you are an ignition customer, um we can actually offer a service where we kind of help you build some of your own automation through Zapier. And I did one, awesome. I did two last week. I've got a few more to do before the end of the year. Uh, we will actually essentially uh, review your tech stack, yep. um, see where Ignition fits at that, whatnot. You know, we don't have to talk about Ignition and see where yep. we can help you uh, recommend some automation is Zapier. Awesome. And that's that's an int- that's a fabulous offer actually because I know there will be somebody listening out there that's like, Peter, we know you're always talking about this Z thing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so I don't know where Zapier. to start. Right? <laughs> I don't know where to start. But if if something like Ignition is appealing, then yep. to use that as the base, like to go, all right, yep. I'm going to do this and then get your help. All right, let's start exactly. with some, some basic apps. I mean, I can see for us, you know, one of the first ones would just be, um, you know, when whenever a new – 
a new um, engagement letter is accepted or paid, then we definitely have a Slack channel where we just all woohoo that. You know, like we just yeah. sort of do a, a high five yep. channel or something um, to 100%. just celebrate that. You know, that sort of stuff is so yeah. – and things – it's so easy in Slack. Um, yeah. So yeah. for sure. Uh, and creating that momentum and energy in your team when we're all working more virtually now too, you know, it's it can be really powerful. Um, yes, with the automation it can tools. Be. Yeah, I, I'm, I've started working remotely full time about six months ago, mm-hmm. and Slack is my window into the world at the moment, and I'd right. be lost without it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, in terms of then your current users, is mm-hmm. there any part of the tool that that you go, I just can't believe more people aren't using this because it's gold. Like, is there something that, that you know, you think, oh, they could just turn that on or use that better or use it differently and it'd be amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give you. Can I give you two? Mm, definitely. Okay. The first one, and it's just more of a shout out because it is cool and and it's getting traction. Is the templates feature? Yep. Um, the amount of time saving that you can have by standardizing some of your service offering. Yeah. Templating it. It means the difference between getting a proposal out the door in um, five minutes or less versus five hours because you yeah. had to pull things in. Um, so that's a great one. Another one that I think is underutilized is our um, embedded video function. Ooh. All right. Because as advisors, everyone's always looking to create a point of difference between mm. yourself and your competitors, um, create that kind of human, um, I guess, um, touch when it comes to, you know, your clients and yep. the correspondence you send them. Um, so you've probably heard of, obviously, you've heard of YouTube. Mm. Um, you would have heard of Vimeo. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you heard of Loom? Yes. Loom yes. is great. I use Loom all the time. Yep. Um, and Loom is a great little tool that you can use just to record sort of short, you know, five minute or less videos. Yep. Um, and it, and just embed them into an email. But we have a Loom embedded uh, feature in our proposals. Ooh, so what nice. you can do is if I've met with you, Peter, yesterday, and I want to impress you even more than I already have, um, I would record a little short Loom video to say, hey, Peter, great to meet you yesterday. Thanks so much for the coffee. Um, here's, your, here's your proposal. Uh, look through it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm looking forward to working with you. You know, that could be the difference between you getting you, me landing you and you going somewhere else down the street. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because you've just given that personal touch. So uh, I've, I have seen a lot of people take that up, which is great. I'd like to see more people use it. Mm. I've even seen people sort of go full Spielberg on it and create some really cool stuff. <laughs> but at the very least, just create a little loom with just your your face yeah. saying, great to meet you, looking forward to it. Even if you're doing things like renewals, you know, a lot of people, yeah. everyone uses our software to do annual renewals. Say, hey, you know, here we are again, 2023 coming up. Looking forward to working with you again. Um, Let me know if you have any questions. Just simple stuff like that. Love the video function. Yeah, it's a video so powerful. We actually um, recently took on a book of clients. Um, And so you sort of, you know, you're reaching out to them and, you know, the formal Mm -hmm. letter goes from the previous place and then our letter goes, boring, boring, boring. boring. Right. And then, but what we did put together was a, just a welcome video that was sort of like the two talking heads and it was me and one of the other advisors and, the yeah. number of great feedback we got on that <laughs> from even much older clients because it felt personal, even though yes. it wasn't to them specifically, it feels personal and that's the way the brain that's processes right. it, you know? And that's so, right. and I think all of us can use a lot of that stuff too. And also yeah. it's quick, you know, typing. I mean, I've started using voice to text a lot more in a whole lot of the yeah. Gmail suite because I've realized that I can talk a lot faster than I can type. So it's far more effective. You know what? I haven't done that yet. I, I, oh. might, I might check that out. Oh, um, it's amazing. I mean, for file notes alone, it's amazing. But even just for emails, I just, you know, when Gmail does it, you can just click the little icon and off did, you go. Does it, does it, I, I would worry about my ums and ahs because I've probably ummed and about 50 million times already today, but. Yeah, that would be my trouble, but I could probably get to it. Yeah, yeah I like that. It's, it's quite quick. And I think it's similarly for, like you say, there's a proposal or something you've put together that you've put some time in. The yeah. video won't take you long out of all of that effort. No, it's it just won't. Part. But it's yeah. so personal, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's, it can have so much impact. Oh, that's a, that's an awful, yeah. awesome one. We love that. Mm-hmm. What about the future? What's on the development path? What's on the all wish right. list? What's coming up? Let me get my crystal ball out. Um <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go back to scope creep again because this is a big uh, – I'm a big fan of managing scope creep well or eliminating it altogether. Mm-hmm. Um, we've actually just released something in the last two weeks. Um, it probably won't mean too much to those who haven't used Ignition yet, but it will make sense. Um, when somebody signs a proposal, um, it previously was somewhat difficult – not overly difficult, it's still only going to take a couple of minutes to change an element of that proposal. Right. 
based right? on their feedback so, or something. So based on the yeah. feedback, based on them saying, "Oh, I don't need that service anymore," or even just right. based on your your you recognizing that there has been some scope creeping, you need to add it either so or move them up from the bronze to the silver or the silver to the gold package, right? Yep. Um, so previously, you would have to basically end that whole proposal. Um, go through and end all the current services and then create a whole new proposal. Okay. We just re- released a feature called service edits where you can just come into that bronze package mm-hmm. and change it to the silver package or the gold awesome. package and then just basically do that internally and then that updates nice. um, all the future invoices that are going out. You know, the next month's payment will be a bit higher because they're now on a higher package. Yeah. Um, so that's been a great feature. But the reason I bring that up is because we are going to do even more work um, around giving you the ability to kind of add work in ad hoc. So yep. as things come up, yep. and as any any professional services provider will understand that, you know, signing something even last week can change to this yeah. week. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you maybe you've forgotten to put it in. Maybe they've asked for something specific, and you don't want to have to kind of overhaul the whole engagement process just to add this little element. Yeah. Maybe the, maybe there's a piece of work that's coming that needs to be done urgently, and you can't wait for them to sign that. It's okay. I'm just going to send you an ad hoc invoice. Right, uh, and I guess the beauty of that is because we actually store those sort of payment details with clients securely, yep. mind you, of course. Um, you've got the ability once that job has been done, once that job that they were desperate to get done by yesterday is finished, you can then go ahead. Okay, cool, ad hoc job in ignition, send it out, invoice it, collect it. It's perfect. Um, so yeah, look, I've probably um, annoyed the dev team by Brit saying this on a podcast, but I don't care. <laughs> um, don't quote me on this. Don't ask for a date on it. But we just started talking about that. And it's obviously, it's a natural progression for an yeah. app like Ignition to go beyond just that sort of engagement piece and start looking yep. at how we can support uh, advisors, accountants, bookkeepers yep. um, throughout the year once they've engaged with the client. Right. And actually, there was a quick question I had. If there's a monthly – so some people will have a um, – ongoing and that's just an ongoing service and it goes forever some might yep. have a 12 month at x a month so does ignition let you do that sort of term period for yes. monthly payments perfect you can you can so you can actually um create your own custom schedule and for example you may have um you may you may give them a discount for the first three months yep. on service a and then after the third or fourth month beyond that service a returns to the normal price uh and or you can do you know um a proposal with three services in it one of them goes for three months and then the next one kicks in and the third one goes for the whole tall up period. So you've got awesome. this massive flexibility. Uh, and like I mentioned before, some of that safety net stuff around making sure you include things that may not particularly need to be done, mm-hmm. but your client knows how much they cost if they do come up and you can just yeah. bill it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, there's so much there. Is there anything we've missed? Uh, we've covered a fair bit. We have covered a fair bit. If you don't mind, I might I might shout out the um, – my colleagues in, in the CX team in general. Yep. Um, we already spoke about the um, the ability to do like we call it a process mapping, where you can actually talk about your app stack and what um, automations you're looking to build. Mm-hmm. Um, but for new people who are on your mission, and you know, with any app, it's always a bit daunting to come on and start <laughs> yeah. using a new app. Um, we do have an onboarding team, the, um, the awesome. CSM team. Shout out to the CSM team; they're awesome, uh, and they help you in the first ninety days um, to set up those templates. Make sure your service library is, you know, industry specific and mm-hmm. even talk to you about some of the more conceptual stuff that you might be going through at the time, you know, in your business and trying to change the way you're billing, change the way you're approaching, quoting, you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, so that's that's a big part of the app because it's all good and well to provide this amazing technology if you just sort of say, what well, do you go? Um Good luck Off with that. Off you go. Yeah. <laughs> May the force um, be with you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we've got a great team there. And then I'm I'm the senior account manager. So my account manager team, which of us, there's eight. Um, we're there to help you scale beyond that. So, yep. you know, I know there's a lot of apps out there that kind of just sort of leave it with you. Um, mm-hmm. But we're here to sort of help you. Um, I know, again, it sounds so cliche. I hate saying it, but we're like another staff member. Yeah. Think of us as, as, as that person especially during that onboarding period where you're you know you're trying to figure out the best way to do things and best practice you know that's that's always a question we go hey what are, what's everyone else doing what are, what are we what are we doing wrong what are we doing right right exactly exactly all right advice explorers if you'd like to find out find out more about ignition which i'm betting they're going to then the <laughs> website link is in the episode show notes but we've also shared brendan's linkedin details so you can always poke him on linkedin and it'll point you in the right direction of who to talk yep. to yep. um Thank you so much for joining us. I'm 
actually really excited for financial advisors with these sort of tools because we are yeah. a bit newer to this game yeah. uh, and, you know, to get up to speed such that we don't need to hire another person, you know, to not do all this stuff, which I think some practices are probably seriously considering right now. Uh-huh, then, yeah. And in this labour market, good luck. So yes. I think to have a solution that can just streamline it, you know things are getting done, it's easy for us, it's easy for the clients, you know, that's yeah, a, yeah. a big tick, I think, for most advisors. So, so excited yeah. to see um, more advice practices taking the tool up. So thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. And if anyone wants to reach out to me directly, yeah, shoot through LinkedIn, Um, and yeah, if you have any specific questions, I'm here. Done. Thank you. Thanks so much, Peter. So I am betting there probably isn't that many of you out there that are actually current users of Ignition as it's a app that's primarily currently accountants and, and book keepers and people like that, but there are advice practices using it. So, you know, if you are one of those, then, hey, if we've missed something or you agree or disagree with what we covered, please head over to the Ensemble Community Platform I'd love to hear your take. This is a sort of element of the tech stack that probably many of us haven't considered to date. So I know I would and other advisors would love to hear your experience um, with Ignition. So now in my thoughts, (laughs) you know, things have changed so much in advice and in particular with how we get paid, right? I mean, that a whole lot of the focus in the last, call it a decade, has been how we get paid, should we, should we not, what's the appropriate way, what's the appropriate place, the timing, the amount, all sorts of things. So I love the fact that tools like Ignition that are focused on fee engagement and scope and payment um, are coming up to make it easy for us that are giving us options to consider of how we do engage with clients, you know, and the fact that it can then integrate straight into zero. So that whole keeping track of the payments and, and, you know, upfronts versus ongoings, all that sort of thing can be a bit more streamlined for us, I think is just fantastic. And the thing is, as an industry we haven't had a lot of experience with collections as a problem, right? Whereas I guarantee our accounting colleagues would share with us that it's a complete pain in the neck, right? So having a system that can up automate or organize the processes around collections or even minimize the need for it at all, I think will just take a significant amount of pressure off. And hey, if utilizing a tool like this actually brings to the four clients that maybe over time we need to exit out of the business, maybe they, you know, accidentally don't pay and it's just through, you know, sheer confusion or or they just forget or maybe they're intentionally delaying payment. Either way, you know, over time we can exit those as we get new ones, we can exit the others that just don't respond to these tools that require sort of more immediate payment. And hey, when you get some support to onboard that also includes helping you connect to Zapier and therefore other tools, then, I mean, that's exactly what I want to hear from a tool I'm considering for my tech stack. So I'd be curious about who's, who this has got thinking for you. You know, if you, if this, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to check it out. If you've had a bit of a play, maybe you've started using the tool in your practice, please reach out. I really would love to hear how you find it. Um, I think we're going to need more and more tools like this. Uh, so I'd love to hear about your experience. Now, as you know, if you've listened to the podcast before, there's really only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, and that's avid curiosity. And you know that I always provide something to sort of feed that curiosity um, in each of us. And I've picked something that's a bit topical for me right now. So today's Curiosity Corner app that caught my eye is Rome Research. Now, you can find them at Rome, R-O-A-M, research.com. And they describe themselves as a note-taking tool for networked thought. It's an easy sort of, you know, it's as easy to use as a document, but it sort of works like a graphical database. So it helps you organize research or thought for the long haul. Now, this has come up for me because, mad as it sounds, I'm considering writing another book for the public. And so the thing is, when you start writing you have these random thoughts at the most random times, right? And it's very hard actually to collect those together in a coherent way because normally the way we write 
um, say it's even a blog or, or a series of blogs, is we sort of do it in a linear fashion. Blank piece of paper, headline, right. Okay, and particularly in our industry, that's how we do it. The challenge is when it's something a bit bigger than that, like a book, it's you just can't write it that way. You'll go insane. Um, and so you need something that helps sort of collate those random thoughts over time and links them back to each other across multiple topics or themes. So this tool lets me just sort of dump a thought that I just had. I'm like, oh, that's a great anecdote. I need to capture that. I can link it to other things that I've already said or written in the tool. And then if I go back on that theme, it'll list for me all of the different things I've said about that topic. So, you know, I think for those of us that are a bit more left-brained, you know, or maybe mathematical brain, whatever it is, then while we may think we need structure, creativity actually can be stifled by too much structure. So having a tool that gives us freedom, lets us dump our thoughts, but keeps us sane by actually organizing those thoughts can actually be really powerful. So I'd suggest if you're you're in that game, maybe you're just looking at writing a series of videos. You know, you've got to write those scripts and you really project, you know, you're really thinking it through and brainstorming, then something like Rome Research can really help you sort of just drop those thoughts as you have them. Welp, that's all we've got for this week, folks. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And hey, if you'd like a speaker to run your audience through, you know, the next thing uh, in advice tech for 2023 being client portals, um, then, you know, I'd love to come and either do maybe an initial webinar or even a full-blown in-person masterclass for your group. We can cover not only to work out if you need a, a client portal, but how to implement it in the practice to ensure it's successful. So please reach out if that's of interest. We're going to also be covering this as a case study topic as part of our upcoming niche down and scale up workshops. And it'll be a case study after we work through exactly who you want to serve in 2023. We'll use a client portal as a case study to work out what tech you need to serve them. Um, so if any of what I've just described is of interest, please, please, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can find me on forward slash Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. Ha 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 ha!